Cool, 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 cool. Andrew starts his lecture by saying, all right. And if you ever watch his recordings, he like yells it. So if you're like listening with headphones on, it's like scary. All right, that's my boy. All right, cool, 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 cool. So what this lecture is gonna cover, I just want you to understand that you're not going to be learning any new concepts. This is all about explaining and demonstrating and showing to you the new ES6 syntax. If you remember when we first introduced all the way three weeks ago on day one that you're going to be learning modern JavaScript, you have so far not been using a lot of what is known as ES6. And that is JavaScript that came out as of 2015 and those new standards that came out. And so we will break down some of those new things that you will see on a regular basis in React. Cool? So now is the time for questions and understanding about what's going on, because you will see it a lot. Going into Mod 4, there should be a solid understanding of what the new syntax looks like and what it does, all right? This is just more like a safari tour. Everyone's on this bus, and I'm gonna point out, like, that's a lion. You're like, oh, a lion, cool. All right, and like that's a giraffe. Like, man, that neck is so long, and that's really about it. All right, I'm not teaching you anything new here. Cool. So, <laughs> you like that? You like that uh, safari analogy? It's Andrews. The first thing I want to show you is something called object destructuring. This gets really complicated. So I'm going to show you the absolute basics. I'm going to show you a blog that I found that can get really deep in the woods. I'm going to send out and attach the link to the blog to look through. And if you have questions on that, please ask, all right? Object destructuring looks a lot like this. You're gonna have a regular old const, a variable, and you're gonna have key value pairs. They can simply be called, right? Let's do this. If I have spaceship here, I can do dot pilot, right? And it'll give me Elon Musk. Any questions on this so far? Thank you, all right? What I can do is I can create brand new variables using the keys that are already inside a variable that exists. So if I wanted to create a new const of pilot and a new const of chef that point to Elon Musk and old Zuck, I can simply do this. What this is saying is in this constant, I'm gonna create in this object destructuring notation, two new variables. Inside from spaceship, there will be a key of pilot and a key of chef. I'm gonna pull the values from those keys and assign them the value to these constants. So naturally, I now have access to something called pilot and it points to Elon. Same with Chef. Are there any questions? Yeah, it, that one's tricky. Remember, a pilot and Chef already exists inside Spaceship. So if you see const followed by this object destructuring notation, I can pass in keys that I know exist, and it will pull the values from the keys of whatever object I pass in. Spaceship's still the whole object. There's no change to spaceship. It gets very helpful when you have nested. It gets very helpful when you have nested. Yeah. Here's where it will really help you. Who has seen something like this? Import from whatever. Right? It's like the same as Ruby's require. What you can do is you can import specific functions within a JavaScript file. And it will help you later on as you get really in the weeds of what this is. And so let's take a look. The first thing I wanna point out is, if you put in something here that does not have a matching key, what do you think will happen? That is correct, right? So if I did const pilot and your boy, pilot would be Elon Musk and your boy would be exist as a const, but it would come back as undefined. <coughs> It's just gonna try to pull the value. And because it does not exist inside spaceship, it'll just say, oh, that's not defined. And so it'll, in the object destructuring, yes, you're limited to the name of the key of what's in here. Cool, are there any questions on this so far? Yeah. Uh, 
No, there is no key of... Uh, Oh, no, I do not add anything. This does not mutate spaceship whatsoever. Good question. Great. So that being said, I want to give you the heads up that it becomes very complicated very quickly. Just know that this is the basis of object destructuring. That object. Very good. Yes. Say again? Yes. You're allowing this pilot to be available right away as opposed to having to do spaceship.pilot obviously is going to give you the same return value. Cool? End it? If you put it in a closure, remember, constant let are block scoped. So if you only need it for something, I would put it inside like its own function, and that way it doesn't exist on the global scope. Cool? So I'm going to quickly glaze over this blog that goes into object destructuring to see how it will be useful practically, but do not be afraid because it will be very complicated. All right, This is just something that you will have to get used to as practice, but you do not have to use this in React. It's just a good practice that you will see, and I'll always try to warn you about these things as you go into Stack Overflow, Quora, and you Google, and you start to see the answers, you will see a lot of the object destructuring so I wanted to open it up to you first so you have some understanding of it so you can ho hopefully break down somebody else's like answers to questions. Cool? So boom, boom, boom. I can do object, right, or spaceship, whatever. Key, 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 pointing to values, right? I can do var1 is object.1, var2, var. Sorry. And then I can console log one, which is this, which points to object dot one, and then I get this as a return value. Are there any questions on this? This is the way we had to do things before, right? This is what it looks like now. If I have an object, I can create the object literal, like before. I can do let one, two, and three, which match the keys of object creating let one is object dot one. And now I have console log one, two, and three, and I get those values. Same exact thing I just showed you. All right, here's where it gets wild. Oh man, this is like React. I can have const listing, all right? This is not really React at this point. It takes in, as an arrow function, one argument. And then it simply is going to return some string, HTML string. Cool? Is there any questions on just this? You will see this extremely often. What I can do is I can say listing. I can pull in object destructuring listing. And I can have listing from the listing object as an argument calling the listing title. Just take, take two seconds. It's going to be okay. Cool. I can refactor it. Const listing is now a listing with a nested object of title is title. Remember that destructuring? If the key and value are the same, it will create it for you. And now I can just do the title. Because if I'm pulling the listing from the listing, the title will create another variable called title at the value of title for the listing. And now my arrow function looks like this. If I do this somewhere else in my code. Object destructure takes a long time. Just wanted to point it out. 
Do not be afraid, and if you are confused, it is 100% okay. These are one of the really, really weird looking syntactical sugar that you'll see, but I just wanted to introduce it to you. You got a question, man? It takes a while to get used to. It will look super unclear, which is why when you see this kind of stuff in your Stack Overflow answers, I want you to go back to this blog, potentially back to this lecture, potentially back to this readme, and understand destructuring. Cool? So, let's go back. Boop, 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 boop. What I can do is I have a class person and it's a constructor, it takes in props being this object. And I can do this.name is props.name, right? I'm just calling the object. So far, so good. Prop, props is literally just a name of the argument. I could have called this, I don't know, dick if I wanted to, then dick.name, right? Like, cool then this favorite color is the arguments that favorite color, which in this case, if props is an object called with keys of name and favorite color, I'm simply setting this dot name to be Winfield and this dot favorite color to be red. This should not confuse anyone. But if you do have a question, I would love to answer it now or offline. I mean, it doesn't matter. Cool? Okay. What I can do is using destructuring with this syntax in the same exact way as this creates its own variable pointing to the same value in the object. If I put in object destructuring, name and fave color, then this dot name is equal to just name, as opposed to props dot name. Because pilot is the same as props dot pilot, spaceship dot pilot. It takes a while, and that's okay. Yeah, this right here, props, because I'm, because I'm passing in name, right? Name right here is going to create a new variable called name pointing to the key of Winfield. It's syntactical sugar. It is the way that this is written. This is no longer the assignment operator you're used to. This is the hardest part to get over. You are used to this being the assignment operator. This is not the assignment operator in object destructuring. All right, I'm going to move on. But if you have questions, please, I will take them offline. All right, because sometimes you just you need to draw it out, and it will make more sense that way. I just wanted to introduce it to you. But never fret, the rest of it gets better. All right, cool. This pulls in something called the key value assignment shortcut. If I have a concept pizza, and it points to a value of pepperoni, and a concept restaurant, <laughs> it borrows authentic New York pizza, then I can have a pizza object saying pizza, the key of pizza object is going to be the value of this variable. key of restaurant is going to be the value of the variable restaurant. So when I do pizza object here, what do you think if I call pizza object dot pizza, what should it give me? Pepperoni. There is an even shorter way of doing it, and that is if the key and the value 
are exactly the same. If the key and the value are exactly the same, I can do this. Raise your hand or just give me a quick thumbs up if that made sense. If you don't give me a thumbs up, then I will assume that you're like, you just need to look at it a little bit longer. Cool? No worries. Good. So, all right, so if I go to pizza object, it creates it for me, right? If I wanted to make another one in the same way, I just did it this way, the shorthand. If the keys and the values are exactly the same, the shorthand is I can just write one argument and it will point to the value of that variable. Yeah. Then you'd have to put a key value pair. Right, but you can, you can mix and match and have some. You can mix and match. You can think of it that way, but do not use the word restructuring because nobody would understand. That's not like a key word in JavaScript. But if that helps you understand, for you personally, yes. Is operating that way. Cool. All right. So it's been a long time since you've been in lecture, huh? All right. Do you guys want a break? Quick, quick show of hands if you want a break. It's three, four. All right, we're going to we're going to take a 2 minute break. All right. Are we are we calling that? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Cool. Cool. So, this right here. Yeah. Right? So, I have a class called person it's just a function. It's a constructor function. And I can simply do const, right? OMAT equals to new person, passing it in an argument. This argument, right? Let's do this. New person, right? And I'm going to pass it in an object, right? Mass assignment style. And this person has a. Uh, Fave food, and that is going to be what Matt? What's your favorite food? Sweet good job. Why right, is there sesame chicken? Nice, cool, cool. All right, what's another attribute? I don't know, like your hair color, hair. All right, gorgeous, cool. So, what happened? Remember, fave food and hair, are they the keys that this constructor, oh, you didn't hear that, you didn't hear that. Ah, it's on the recording. Are they the keys the constructor is expecting? No. So it's going to point them to undefined. Now, if I did that exact thing and I said, who, wa who wants to be made? That's, that's weird. No? No? Sure. <laughs> Isaac, right? Cool. You have a name. And your name is? Sure, your name is? Pizza? You cool with that? Okay. Don't tell me that backstory. You always wanted what? Cool. And I make this. What will I see when I call Isaac? 
because it's pulling this name keyword here knowing it's going to be pulled in. Cool, let's do this one more time, not in the class syntax, right? In this sort of original syntax. I can have const, right? What's something cool? Hot air balloons, of course, right? Equals to, cool, what are some attributes of this hot air balloon? Has a balloon? Has has balloon? Oh, I spelled that wrong. This is embarrassing. Don't judge me. It's hard to do this. You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know. True, I guess. All right, cool. And then what else do we got? Color. Cool. What's this balloon's color? Brick red. Cool. What else do we have? This balloon. Gas, gas, right? Fire, and then location, right? Cool. Location, cool. And uh, what do you want? Lost? Lost. Lost. Cool. Great. So now, using this exact object destructuring, can I do const with this object destructuring syntax pointing to what am I pulling the keys from? Cool. And what are the keys that I want? Sure. Color. Boom. Gas. Cool. And what else? Let's, let's just pull two and then put something like, is there a desk inside hot air balloons? Let's find out. Bloop. Can I do color? What do I see when I put color? Cool. And I see gas. Fire. What if I do desk? So you get that, right? As long as these keys match what object I'm passing in, it will pull the value from it and create a new variable. So back to this one more time. I spent way too much time on this. I'm going to be passing in an object just like this, right? I have a name and a hair. This only knows of name. So it's going to pull napkins. And it does. But does it know about hair? No, it's going to create a brand new variable called hair. And it's going to assign it what? Well, it's going to assign it to gorgeous. The problem is I never use it. And then it disappears because of closure scope. Was favorite color ever passed in? So favorite color has no value, which means it's undefined. So it's going to give this dot fave color equals undefined. So when I make, when I create the object Isaac, I get the name pulled properly, fave color not pulled properly. That's why fave food and hair didn't work because it's looking for a keys of name and favorite color in this object that I pass into new person. Okay, I cannot spend more time on this. If you need help, I will help you, but it hopefully just the practice, like I said, just the practice, just looking at it and playing with it and breaking it will help you. Airborne, hot air balloon. That didn't come out right. We're gonna learn, we're gonna learn about the ES6 spread operator. Cool? Just transitioning smoothly like I do. Who knows the difference between slice and splice? That's S P S S L, S L, you know, splice, whatever. Splice is what? Yes. So, thank. Yeah. Let's give it up. <laughs> Powerful. Thank you for thank you for that. So, what I'm saying is because my English is not so good, right? So, slice, right, versus splice, right? Cool. So the only real difference is in the same way, that's not going to work, but I just want it on record, right? Matt versus, in Ruby we had this. Do you remember this? Let me blow this up a little bit. Is that helpful? I'm sorry. Cool. It's just the destructive version. 
How often did you use map with a bang in Ruby? OK, never, right? Never. Yeah? Very good. Because you do not want to change and mutate the original data that you have. So you want to use map to return a copy, a new array, if you will, of that original data with the transformations. Something important I want to give you is this is slice, right? Slice. Pure or impure? Pure, because it does not mutate the original data. That means that every time I call slice, can I reliably predict what will come out if given the exact same inputs? Yes. Can I do the same for splice? No, because what if splice takes off one thing in the array? And there are four things in the array. I call it once, there's now three. I call it again, there's now two. I call it again, there's now one. I call it again, there's nothing. I call it again, and I get an error. Right? It is, thank you, it is impure. It will mutate the original data. So in the same way, you will have to learn how to create your own copy of your own objects. What I mean by that is a lot in React and a lot in good functional programming is pure functions. So who remembers, all right? If I were to do, uh, I don't know, cool object, all right? It's just some something, right? It's just some key of cool and a, key, and a value of yes, right? I'm sorry, I'm boring. You could just shout out random things for me. Uh, that'd be helpful. And if I did <laughs> object two equals object, what does this do again? Right. It points to the same place in memory. Meaning, did I make a copy of the original object? No, I did not, right? Meaning, if I do object two and I added Right, added, right, new attribute. What can I expect to see on object one? That added new attribute. What I want to do is I want to create a brand new object that is independent of the first object. So, what we can do is use something called the spread operator. I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's fine. Cool. I can create a new object, object three, and I will simply say in this object, I want to spread all of the objects, all of the data, all of the properties, all of the key value pairs of object one. Or, or just object, sorry, I didn't put one there. Cool. So object three, huh, interesting. But is object three strictly equal to object? So that means that if I were to add object three, right, more features, yep, MVP first, coach. And I were to go check on object, it did not add it, but in fact object three has it. So I've successfully created a separate copy of this object that does not mutate the original data. Did everyone understand what I just said? I created a separate copy and did not mutate the original data. Quick thumbs up for the spread operator. Cool. Spread operator also works on uh, arrays, but I won't go into it in the exact same way, right? I just spread out the data from the array. Yeah? So what this is doing, the spread operator, what you'll see is we have something called mud, right? With the key of blood, this was obviously written back in October because it's spooky season right now. I could do mud copy, spread the contents 
All right, all the key value pairs of the original object and then add in any objects and key values I want after. So now mud copy is different from mud because it's going to have not only this extra, but I'm spreading all of the original key value pairs of mud in here. You just have to get used to this syntax. This is called the spread operator. Cool? What this is doing, before we had the spread operator, ES6, I had to do something called object.assign. And what that would do is const object4. I had to do object.assign and give it the target. The target in this case is going to be an empty object. I'm going to make a brand new object. And inside that object, I'm going to put in it all the details of the first object. One more time. Object.assign is going to take a target. So it's going to be a new object literal. Literally, like, new object right here. Brand new literal object, right? And inside that object, I'm going to take all of the key values of anything else, really, the original object, and I'm going to make it. So object 4 now exists, and object 4 does that strictly equal to object? No. This is how I used to do it. Object.assign, empty object, with the thing I want to copy. This is not, I mean, it's not sexy. So the spread operator came about. And that's really all it's doing. Are there any questions on the spread operator? Can you use a spread operator and slice? Yeah. Like if I wanted to, um, I can just call dot slice. And dot slice, does that work on objects? All right, but if I wanted to, right, I can have like const some cool array, right, like one, two, three. Yeah. And I can have in this brand new array, I can spread the first array. I can also const array three, and then here I can go, ha, just kidding, four, five, six. Cool. But if we look back at the original array, it is not mutated or changed. It holds its own place in memory. Yes, sir. Yes, you can add more values, yeah. Yes, so let's just say I had a const array 5. I skipped 4, don't worry. And what I wanted to do was do 4, 5, 6, array 1. You see this? What do you think I will see? Right? I mean, realistically, I can probably do, I'm not going to go back. And then just go, haha, -ha, 0, 1, and 9, I know, for fun. So it's wherever you want that spread. Spread, spread, spread. It just doesn't sound as good as Rails. Sorry. Cool. So get good at slice. Get good at manipulating arrays. It will be very important. Do you remember how much we struggled with dot find and the patch? And then we replaced an object at a certain index of with a new updated object. These will be things that you will have to get used to, and it just comes with practice. And it's going to be OK. Um, the spread operator did not exist until ES6. So you would have to do literally like array.new and then like copy the contents of your old array into it. And it was painful. Thank you, spread. So 
if I were to do dot slice, right, of one, what do you think will happen? It's just gonna what? Pull this off and leave in mur murder face, right? If I were to remove, I'm not, this, Andrew wrote this one, all right? At least these parts, not like a massive narcissist. How does filter work? It accepts a callback, right? Callback will look a little weird to you? Okay, so a couple things I want to point out. This is the arrow function, not a keyword function, right? But if there is only ever one argument coming inside, you can remove the parentheses from it. If there's only one argument. If there's zero arguments, you have to still put you can't just call the arrow on air, right? So this only works with one argument. Cool. I want to show you all of the syntactical sugar that's out there so you get used to it. And all this is saying is in the callback, you will receive a name, right, from the names filter, right, your first element, second element, third element. And if that name does not equal to Evans, then return. So filter is just saying that Based on this condition, I'm going to push into a new array. <coughs> to make it more clear, I'm going to write out my own do-it-yourself filter. So simply, do you remember array.prototype? I'm going to create a new functionality on the array. Any array that is created here and forevermore will have access to my filter, the special one that I just made. And that's just going to be a function that takes in a callback. Because remember, filter is just a function that takes a callback. That's it. I'm going to make a brand new empty array. Who remembers doing this when you were dot eaching everything in mod one? And you were just like, I'm going to, great. Who cares about map or select or find? I'm just going to make a brand new empty array inside here, iterate through, and push into that array. That's how it works in the source code. Cool? Except they put a name on it. A cool name on it. So I just make this empty array. I iterate through everything. We're going to get into this again. Don't worry. And I just do a quick for loop. Right now, arrays are indexed at zero, so I start it at zero. The length of the array, and then go one more. First, I do what is the current array element? Well, it's this, right? the actual array, at an index of zero. That's the first element in array, right? Array at index zero. So the current element is going to be array at index zero, because i is zero. If now I invoke the callback that I passed in, which is going to be, does the name, right, which is current array element, right? It's passing in as argument, which is the first element in the array, and the first element is yours truly, right? Does that not equal to Evans? No, right? Okay, ignore, boom. And now, the next item, right? So it never hits this continue for loop. So I++, plus plus, I is now one. Const current array element, this at element one is going to be the second element, right? Murder phase. If callback, right, being invoked, callback being invoked, with the name, current array element, and is murder face not equal to Evans, this runs true, the filtered array, push murder face. Great. I++. Plus plus, there are no more items. Return the new array with pushed current array element, which is murder face, and that is how filter is done. Cool? It's literally doing this, but you've done this in Ruby. It looks a little weirder in JavaScript, and that's okay. I need you to understand what's happening under the hood. So when you call filter, reduce this is a trickier one, find, map. You understand what this callback is doing and how it's working. Was this helpful? Cool. You can also monkey patch, right? Array.monkey patch. It just throws this monkey. So like, look. 
or to take this, and now we're to do array, any array that monkey patch, and return that. Cool? Like even if I had an array with real stuff. So dirty. Cool? So you can monkey patch, or you can add on functionality, or whatever you want. Just remember the prototype chain. Cool? As practice, you really should do that. Yes, no, yeah. As practice, you really should do that, no. Yeah, if I see this in your code, I'm like, huh. And then if you roll comments on it, like, just monkeying around, I'm like, ah, and then I'll let it go. But if, I, I would ask you about it, though. I'd be like, ah. Whew, that joke landed. So. Remember, the arrow function without the curly braces on one line has a, and the explicit return is if you throw in the curly, the curly braces, I don't know why people call it that here, it's like invading my vocabulary, I have to put return, cool? What is a very key indicator that you're missing return? We see a lot of undefines coming up, right? That's the first place I would look. All right, I'm just going to cover, I'm going to cover this very quickly. I'm going to talk about classes, and then we will pretty much be done, all right? So, a little fun factoid over here. I have a dog, and all it does is a key of Winfield, favorite sign. Winfield is Andrew's dog, by the way. So if you want to go like, say, and if, if you really talk to him, he'll send you pictures. So there's a function. So dog dot say name, right? What is this in dog dot say name? It's going to be the dog, right? Dog dot say name. The this is obviously going to be the dog, right? You got the, the this lecture from Andrew, right? Powerful. Powerful. What happens in the arrow function? of this. Who knows what this is in the arrow function? Okay, please get better at this, all right? At, get better at understanding the keyword this in JavaScript. Ja? Okay, all right, let's play. Let's play, cool. <laughs> Remember, the arrow function inherits what this is. So when I do dog dot bark name, what is happening here? It has no reference to this. It comes back, this dot name comes back undefined. Ugh. Because function keyword, the function keyword will create the this context. Without it, it does not understand what this is. It will assume the this of dog. What is the this of dog? The window, right? Or undefined. Cool? So, that being said, when I do dog dot save favorite foods, what is, oh, I gave it away, what is this in dog dot save favorite foods with the keyword function? This is dog dot save favorite foods, right? So we have dog dot save favorite foods. The this keyword in the function keyword is going to be dog. When I get to the for each though, and I execute the callback, because it's an arrow function, it will inherit what this was at the time of execution. And this right here is the dog. So in the arrow function version, this will be dog. So. This comes through. 
if I do it with the function keyword, this is my best way of explaining it to you, and I'm sorry I, was, I missed out on your this lecture. I feel terrible. I really do. All right, cool. Let's let's bring this back over here. Bloop, 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 bloop. Does Andrew do that? Andrew do that for you? Cool. Great. The function keyword builds its own this, right? So naturally, this is still dog. Are we following along? All right. In the same way that it was right here. In the for each, the function keyword will build its own this. So what is the key, what is this in the functions keywords own this? Yeah, the window, it's undefined. So if I were to execute this, it was just, I don't know. Am I yelling? I'm so sorry, I'll move quicker. There's a meeting coming up, cool. So, any questions on that? All right, review the this keyword, all right? Correct. He assigned it probably as undefined, but great. All right. Last thing I want to go over is when you create a dog class or you create a class in general, you do not write the keyword function. It will break on you. If you want to add methods, you add them just like you do in Ruby. You just literally define them right inside. So if I were to do this, look up, look up, look up. I can do dog. I have to create a new dog. Const like cookies. That's my dog. That's my dog name. New dog. All right? What a. All right. And his name is the Cooksters. And he is sadly. Okay, great. Yep. And you can just call bark like this. Cool? That's how you have to define them here. Please get good at understanding how. Map, reduce, for each, filter, and find. They will be very, very common in the same way that they're very common in Active Record and how you use them in Ruby. They're going to be your bread and butter. The last thing, this is super fast, ready? When you assign keys and values dynamically, what I mean by that is if I have a const, all right, does anyone want to volunteer for this? Cool. All right, is cool. All right, if I were to do a new object, all right, it's just a new object and it's like squeak, cool, very good, squeak, and it points to a key of uh, mouse, right? It doesn't matter. So, what is object? All right, squeak and mouse. So, if I were to do object and I ask for squeak, what do I get? All right. And if I do object at a key of Isaac, what do I get? Because it doesn't exist, right? That makes sense. Cool. So what if I do object dot what? Squeak. Whatever. All right. And what do I want this to point to now? Yep. Sure. Right? I can just dynamically assign them with the dot operator. If I were to, however, ask for its value, what would happen? I'm sorry. It wants it in the string. It's punk. Okay. So. We understand that this and this can kind of do the same things. That's really what this whole demonstration was about, right? But here are the subtle differences. Does everyone understand that I can, I can pull something in the dot and I can pull something in this bracket notation? So far, so good, right? Cool. So if I have a const object, right, and that's just going to be, I don't know, key one. I'm so lazy right now, right? And it's like a key. Yeah, Boom. Nice. 
airborne. Cool. Yeah? Yeah, you like that? Huh? All right, so P1. Uh, yeah, it doesn't like it. Cool. So, and I can call dot P1. I need 30 seconds. If I have a const called key 2 and it is pointing to this thinker, thinking, right? If I were to do object dot key 2, what do you think I will get? Undefined, right? And if I do object with a key of 2, well, I get undefined. So far, so good. If I do object at a key of two is equal to, ooh, what is object? Ah, dang it, I shouldn't have used an emoji. All right, let's try this. Key three is, oh, that's not gonna work. Thinker. Cool. If I were to do object at a key of three, what would I want to assign this value to? Smart. Cool? Don't worry about key three in quotes right now. Don't worry. Cool? What would I get as the key in the object? Who thinks it's going to be key three? Thinker, because I'm pointing to the variable thinker. That's why I had to specify these as keys, as strings, right? If I were to do object dot key three, it's undefined, right? And I can assign it key number three, object key three. Remember, if I use the brackets, it will pull a variable. If I use the dot notation, it will take exactly what I write after the dot notation. So there is a small difference between the dot notation and retrieving keys and variables using the brackets. Did everyone get that? Sorry, I was like kind of scrambling. It was like 10 seconds left. Cool. All right. Hey, I, I hope this use was useful to you.